What's up everyone, Doyler here, and I wanted to release a Gate of the Void, Realms Gate, sort of tutorial and walkthrough and really just introduction to the feature as a whole. So to get to the Realms Gate, you go to the Gate of the Void, which you will need an E5 here to get to the Gate of the Void. That said, don't worry if you don't have an E5 yet, the Realms Gate is really only if you have an E5 hero. So when you go into the Realms Gate, you're presented with a map that looks like this, with various hexagons that have different features and whatnot. The first thing you'll want to know is you have 240 Lumino energy, effectively your stamina for exploring this area, and it refills every six minutes, one energy every six minutes. What this means is it takes 24 hours to go from empty to full energy, and as you can see, I let my stamina overflow just so I can make this video for you guys. So there are five levels in the Realms Gate, as you can see here. Um, so five different hexagon maps. Once you get to level five out of five, this final square will be a boss battle. It will be a bit harder, but when you clear it, you go on, you reset the level, you get all of your rewards, and you get to keep increasing your difficulty. Plus, the bosses give pretty good rewards. So in each area, there are different opponents and whatnot. I'll cover all of these in a second. Your goal is to move left to right, and you can only move adjacent hexagons. So if I start here, I can only go here, then I can only go here, then I can go to either of these two, from here I can only go to these two, and so on. So you just go left to right, you can't backtrack, so if you are here, you can't go back to either of these, and so on. So, again, like I said, the first four levels, the fifth level, you'll finish. Um, each of these colored areas gives your heroes a bonus, so this one is green. It gives 30% HP and 15% attack to forest heroes, uh, as well as, I believe, your enemies, though I don't think you face any relevant ones. Um, so, once these get harder, you are going to want to keep in mind. So, you know, when I come to here and I have a selection, um, for instance, on my team, I use the Sherlock and no Abyss Hero, so I'd want to go to this one instead of this one. Um, it doesn't really become relevant until it starts getting difficult for you, but keep that in mind. So there are different types of enemies. There are void phantoms slash void creatures. These are your basic enemies. It's a 6v6 battle. Um, usually they have a full faction bonus, so you fight like a uh, light wave, a like force wave, and so on. And I'll show these off in a second. Um, or you'll fight puppets, which will look like actually the puppets you use to upgrade your heroes at 9 star or 10 star. Um, and they'll have some special effects, as well as the final bosses. None of these hit points will regenerate, so if you do lose a battle, you can hop right back in and they will be harmed. So don't worry about having to beat them in one fell swoop. Um, I covered the regeneration for you guys. There are also crystals and blessing that you can obtain. So for example, this is an idle ruins. You will get a crystal here. And I don't have any in my inventory to show you, but some of them will convert all enemies to training dummies. Some will increase the rewards you get from all enemies. Some will weaken all of the enemies and so on. Alternatively, you can get a Blessing, which can come from here. These will give you buffs and occasionally debuffs for every battle you encounter. So right now, my frontline enemies take 15% less damage from crits, and my backline heroes do 15% more attack, so pretty good. Um, so the last thing I want to cover is Smashing. So instead of just clicking on an area and randomly moving, you can set a path. And I recommend setting a path anyway when you get to a... A new level just so you know sort of where you want to go in case you forget so for instance I know that my path is going to be I want to do forest first because I want to go south but I'm gonna do this I have to do these um, one of these is dark one of these is shadow so I want to do dark actually no I want to get this question mark so I'm gonna go this way then I have to go here I'm gonna go here mining is your best bet and I'm about to switch to after I cover my path I'll cover what each of the squares mean and why you want to go for them so then I'm going to do this, and then finally I'll finish it off on probably this dark one for my carry and drake. So this is going to be my path. Now if I click this smash button, I could smash all of these waves. It would use all of my energy up until it got there, but I wouldn't be able to do mining, which is the best bet. Not to mention that if I'm losing battles, I wouldn't know. If it's almost reset and you're in a hurry and you're not trying to get your void heroes as fast as possible, you can smash. That said, I recommend doing all of this manually if you can. It is a little tedious early on, but I promise it's worth it, and mining is your best bet. So I'm going to cover each of these squares first, then we'll jump out of game to a strategy guide from Jimmy, and then I'll come back and finish off. So these basic 
um, sort of skull squares. These are void creatures. When you go into these stages, you're going to find um, five regular enemy waves. You'll defeat them. You'll end the wave once you go through the portal. These question marks are void vaults. They are an RNG chance to get a few different things. They could be treasure. They could be crystals. They could be enemies and so on. These waves right here are treasure chests. Sorry. Um, so they're going to be chests that cost 10 Lumino energy each to open. You have a chance to get Crystals of Transcendence for your free Void Heroes, but you could also get like Monster Souls, Chaos Stones, and so on. Um, I haven't done the math on what treasures are really worth in the end. That said, the current strategy recommends to avoid them, so keep that in mind. Hopefully I'll eventually have a math video on optimizing this, but for now we're going to follow Jimmy's strategy. Next up you have Puppets. So these are, think of these as a mini boss. Um, they're going to be big dummies that you fight, but they're going to have some stronger buffs and debuffs. And even at my current difficulty, some of them will take over 15 turns or maybe even defeat me. This right here is that idle ruins. You are going to get a crystal here that you is a one-time use item during one uh, level, one floor, one of these hexagons per level that gives you a buff or a bonus, something like that. And sorry the that was i'm mistaken the idle ruins is where you get these blessings the void crystal is where you get the crystals that i just mentioned so i'm not going to get one of them to show off in this path and finally you have mysterious cavern there is a mine you enter and it has some requirements so it requires a 10 star hero at the very least sometimes it requires a specific faction or specific type or multiples and you will get crystals of transcendence from these you can get up to i believe 12,000 crystals um, depending on if you meet all of the requirements. So that covers all of the squares. Let's quickly switch to Jimmy's strategy guide and I will hide my face very briefly. As it turns out, I did not have my microphone on when I originally recorded this, so I'm going to have to narrate over this picture. The TLDR for Jimmy's strategy, which I haven't quite mathed out yet, but I trust so far, is to maximize the number of mining tiles you go to while minimizing the amount of energy you spent in other tiles. So the less energy you spend in other tiles, the faster you clear floors, the more mining tiles you're able to accomplish. This means you want to obviously focus on mining tiles, but other than that, you want to look for blessing buff, void crystal and void vault tiles, because these are going to take either 15 energy for the first two or 0 slash 30 energy for the last one. The normal void creature waves are going to take 25, so they're not quite optimal, plus they don't give you any bonus rewards or anything. And the treasure chest tiles are going to cost 35 energy, and it's up to RNG as to what you will get from them. I'd love to do some math on the number of crystals per energy in the chests. I'm guessing it's not quite optimal, and Increasing your void corruption itself is valuable, but I definitely recommend following this strategy guide for now um, At least until we've got a little more data and thanks again to Jimmy for this awesome awesome infographic Now so let's hop back in game and I'll cover void corruption So whenever you clear a level not an entire realm skate a level So when I clear this you have a chance to increase your void corruption one level which I'm gonna do right now So now and it will reset any unfinished waves so now I have Void Corruption 17, and Void Corruption A determines the stats of the opponents you face, but B also determines the rewards you get. So ideally you want to beat the highest Void Corruption level that you can to maximize your rewards. And this caps out at 100, which is crazy, because the Cheddar account is struggling at Void 17 already. So with all of that said, I know this is getting long, but let's jump in and show off some of these battles. So as you can see, I've have a void corruption 17 void creature basic void phantasm full light wave and i'm gonna get 266 crystals of transcendence 200 stellar shards 5336 gold and 6670 spirit so i'm actually gonna skip these battles since i want to go through a whole floor for you guys um and i'll probably speed this part up so i'll come back when we get to a different type of level all right so i know i sped that up so as you can see i am going to go to that void vault question mark next so it's either a going to be a chance for a zero energy level where i get a crystal and a blessing or it will be a standard wave i also wanted to point out um i know i sped through those last few waves that clicking around this does not cost any energy so you can click as much as you want 
Um, you're just trying to get to the waves. So as you can see, this is a normal wave. So I'll speed this up again and come back when we get to something interesting. I will show off some battles against puppets later on, but this is your basic 6v6 Tower of Oblivion or whatever wave that you can easily beat for now on my account. All right, so we are up to a puppet level, so I will show off that battle. I also want to note that you cannot enter the portal until you finish the entire level, so there's no way to accidentally skip a crystal or a buff or something like that. So as you can see, we've got a trial of atrocity. So in this trial, they do a bit more damage to our back line. If we don't defeat the puppet within five rounds, they're going to do a lot more damage from their basic and actives each round. And it's also magic corrosion. So they have purify basically is what this means. But note that you do get 1334 crystals and a thousand cell shards. So the rewards are better. Let's watch this one. I think this was one is easier for me, but some of the healing or wrath ones, um, energy drain are definitely harder. So maybe I'll be able to show off the purify as well if we are able to dub them. Um, we do have some debuffs on them though, as you can see. Yep, so if you quickly saw that one purified this debuff, as did this one. Um, so it is purify, not immunity to stuff. So if you stack up debuffs and whatnot, you will be able to maintain them. But as you can see, this wave is still fairly easy for my team. Um, there are some hard ones even for me at this point with the 345 PvP team. So I'll probably have to start building PvE teams for um, Realms Gate. But round five, we won before they frenzied and we got our rewards. Next up is the Idle Ruins. We are going to get a blessing here, so I will not speed through this part. Uh, I meant to skip the battle. We'll show this off, but it's for my team at Void Corruption 17. The 322s are still fairly easy. Um, Force is occasionally a problem for my other account, just on account of the Grooves, but this should be a breeze. Yeah, Russ will get in the air, and we will clean up very nicely. Yep, nice and easy. Michelle will res. We're fine. So this only took 15 energy because there are only three battles. But let's grab our blessing. So you click this totem and you get an option of three blessing. So in this case, I'm just going to give my Sherlock and carry some more hit points. And we are done with the wave. So as you saw, the portal did not open until I got my blessing. Now we are up to mining. The best crystals per energy you can find so we'll fight through our normal waves now i do want to point something out mining is the only event that it is possible to skip so as you see this portal is open but we haven't done the mine keep this in mind if nothing else from this video make sure you populate your mind before entering the portal this is what you're trying to farm other than bosses so we go to our mine we see our requirements are a dark hero and a 10 star hero. So if we were to add a non 10 star dark hero, if we were at a 10 star, we would get unlocked this. If we're at both, we get this. And note that a hero can cover both. So if we do this, we just get one. But if we were to add our Aspen, it covers both for us. And now this Aspen is locked into the mining cave until we finish this level. So don't put your best heroes in here if you don't have to, since you're not gonna get them back until you clear the floor entirely. And you're also not going to get the rewards until then. So we're actually going to come up a little short on clearing this. I believe I'll have zero energy by the boss wave, but let's see. So our floor takes a little more than 240 normally, especially if you run into a mining wave. So yeah, this will take 25, so I'll have one energy left, I believe. All right, so the bosses for normal levels are just going to be another puppet like you saw here. So it's not that interesting to show off. That said, I may add another video showing off the Void bosses, but that is going to be it for my Realms Gate tutorial and introduction. Um, I'll speed up some of the other parts, but hopefully you learned a lot. But please let me know in the comments if you have any other questions or comments about the Realms Gate, the Void in general, or if you just have any feedback on you did some math and there may be some optimal paths that Jimmy or I haven't thought of. That's going to be it for this video though, but be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons if you like the content, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow.